We went up to Strawberry Reservoir on June 1st for the cutthroat trout viewing day to watch the spawning fish come in. We were met at the visitor center by the gracious host of Earl and Wendy LaMaster, and they gave us some information that we needed and then showed us where to go for the uh, fish trap and egg recovery facility. When we arrived there, we had project biologist Justin Robinson showing off a 26-inch cutthroat trout. Wow, that was an impressive fish. And it was a little bit of a struggle for him to hold it still because the fish was so strong. Later, we talked to Justin about the importance of cutthroat trout in Strawberry Reservoir. Do you want to talk just a little bit about the importance of uh, the cutthroat for the ecology of uh, sure. the lake? Uh, the, the whole reason that we have the cutthroat in Strawberry Reservoir is to control the Utah chub. Uh, Utah chub are not native to this drainage. They're actually native to the Bonneville Basin. So that would be the Wasatch Front. Just over the hill, they're native. Here they are not. They were brought in uh, as a bait fish. People like to use live bait but they don't want to carry them home because they can just go down to their pond and get more the next time. So they just dump them over the side of their boat when they're done with the day, the ones they haven't used for fishing. So they got introduced. Uh, this, the very first, they, they've been introduced for decades. The thing with Utah chub is that they're very fecund. They have lots of babies, they grow very fast, and they reproduce very quickly. So... Because of that and their ability to outcompete other fishes, they can eat better than anything else. Eat fast, grow fast, have lots of babies. Pretty soon they'll take over a whole water body. In the late 60s, we treated the reservoir. Early 60s, sorry. 63, right? Anyway, they treated the reservoir with Rotenone. It was a much different reservoir. It was very small. Uh, it was just the strawberry side. We did not have the Soldier Creek side. They completely removed Utah chub and other rough fish. Fish are just any rough fish are just any fish we don't desire to be in a body of water. They were very successful at removing them. Uh, it was 11 years before we saw them again. By the time that chub population grew to where they were crowding out our sport fish, our rainbow trout at the time mainly, the reservoir had grown. It included both the strawberry and the Soldier Creek sides. We knew that we, we needed to do a treatment, but because of the size of the reservoir, we knew that we were not going to be able to completely kill off the Utah chub. So at the time, the biologists in charge decided we needed to bring in a biological control, a fish that could eat these Utah chub. And so what we would do is the treatment would be a reset, knock the populations back, we'd flood it with a bunch of this predatory fish, uh, that could then keep the chub in, in control as the chub population started to rebound from the treatment. We looked at a lot of different options, everything from smallmouth bass, and I'm sure they looked at northern pike and, and many other things, but it was decided that none of those warm water fish would survive well in strawberry. We're too cold. We needed to find a trout that could do it. And they went to Bear Lake for the Bear Lake strand of the Bonneville cutthroat trout because Bear Lake naturally has Utah chub in it. But the population is not out of control. And that's because as those two species, the Utah chub and the Bear Lake strain of the Bonneville cutthroat, evolved together, the Bear Lake cutthroat became very good at eating Utah chub. We thought, let's try it. So in 1990, we treated the reservoir again, reset the whole structure, and started putting a lot of these cutthroat in. We had some success. We knocked the chub back pretty well. It was a few years before we saw them show up at our gill nets again, but we soon saw them coming back. We went through many regulation changes. Uh, I think there, there was at least five, if not six, trying to find a regulation that would allow for a large enough population of these Bear Lake cutthroat so that that population would be strong enough to keep the chub in control. And with the, with the slot limit that we have in place right now, where we protect all fish from harvest between 15 and 22 inches, allow a couple of smaller, less than 15 inch fish to go home because they aren't ready to start eating other fish yet. And then by the time they get to 22 inches, we still want people to be able to harvest those larger fish. There are very few of them that get to that size in the reservoir. So we wanted to allow for some harvest. We really looked at 
what size fish, what size barely cutthroat is going to be our best chub eater. And that was fish between 16 and 22. So we put the slot limit on in 2003 and instantly saw a decline in the Utah chub population. From the, the regulation went into effect January 1, by the time we deal netted in October, the chub population had gone back down. They had, it had started to ramp up uh, before the, the slot was put on. Since 2003, we've seen the chub population come back down. They're not completely gone, but they're very, it's very low, and the, the population is very stable, as long as we have strong populations of the Bear Lake cutthroat. Recently, we've seen a slight decline. Uh, some of our fish came in uh, and didn't survive. Some of our stocks of, of Bear Lake cutthroat just didn't survive. They were sick or they ran into the larger predatory cutthroat and were eaten. And they, the population of the cutthroat has started to go back down just a little bit. When we started to see that population go down, we started to see an instant response in the chub population. So it's a little worrisome, but it also gave us some very good information. We have estimates of how many adult cutthroat are in the reservoir at any given time. We mark every fish that we bring in from the hatchery, with that, we're able to model our population. 